pocket dissection for generator replacement differs from the de novo implantation in that care must be exercised not to damage indwelling generator and implanted leads. So in this short tutorial, I will be walking you through uh, the steps in pocket dissection and uh, be giving some practical tips on how to avoid damage to the leads and generator. So here we are doing a plane by plane, layer by layer uh, dissection using electrocautery. But uh, one crucial tip is we need to be constantly palpating for the presence of leads that may be inadvertently positioned uh, superficial to the generator. So here, unfortunately, in this case, there were uh, portions of the lead that were positioned superficial to the generator. And so we could only use the electrocautery uh, up to a certain extent, and after which we had to shift to blunt dissection using the medicine bomb. This uh, will allow us to isolate the lead safely and not cause undue damage to the lead itself or to the insulation. In this particular case, there were two portions of the leads that were superficial here, shown in the video as such. And we work around these portions, portions of the leads to uh, isolate them, after which we try to extricate the generator from under the lead without pulling or causing too much traction, which may damage the leads. We use the mixer, and ultimately here we are able to pull out the generator Unscrewing certain leads may give us uh, length and allow us to further further isolate the, the leads using further blunt dissection. We try to free up as much length of all leads as possible and this will allow us to freshly approach the new pocket by allowing coiling of all leads at the back of the generator which is where they should be positioned in the first place. It's a, a bit of a quagmire here in this particular pocket and effort must be exercised to define the plane of the pectoralis fascia which can be very challenging. There is even an abandoned lead here which we take out of the pocket, trim excess tissue from and pull through as such. Sometimes it may be necessary to enlarge the pocket for uh, cases where the new generator is larger than the old one, it may be necessary to add more local anesthetic to deeper layers of the pocket which uh, before this had not been infiltrated well with the local anesthetic. And after having freed up a significant length of the leads and defined the plane of the pectoralis fascia, then we can proceed to washing the pocket with an antibiotic saline solution recording serial numbers of the leads to make sure that they are not interchanged upon reconnection with the new generator and finally positioning the generator inside the pocket. Pocket closure is uh, most important because it ensures that the device uh, seals properly in the right plane and prevents the migration of the device into other planes. So I usually start out with a monofilament 3O, making a knot at the corner. The most important layer is the first layer, where we close and make sure to capture the fascia, the pectoralis fascia. Because this pectoralis fascia is what defines the walls of the pocket. If one is not able to capture this layer, then uh, this inadvertently results in too thin tissue superficial to the generator and eventually thinning out of the tissue and possible erosion in thin and cachectic individuals. So the vertical mattress is like a running stitch that uh, involves the first, uh, the lower half to two-thirds of the pocket and the pectoralis fascia. At the end, we create a knot, a square knot, and cut off the excess suture. Then create the second layer by going backwards using the same vector vertical mattress. 
For the second layer, it is important to close out all potential spaces to avoid accumulation of fluid, which can be uh, an idus for infection, for generator infection in the future. One challenge with replacements is that the presence of fibrosis and scar tissue may make suturing a challenge. And you can see in this particular portion of the clip that there is some resistance to uh, delivering the suture. Also, uh, when we suture, we want to always uh, take advantage of the angle of the needle to avoid bending it or breaking it. And then once again, we cut off the excess suture as such. And the final layer is a subcuticular layer, which I close using a 4O, a monofilament 4O, such as monosin or monocryl. And uh, in the video, you can see the subcuticular layer is being applied without a knot and uh, with the least tension possible to create a, an aesthetically pleasing result. And then once again, when we get to the end of the subcuticular or superficial layer, we do not knot. Instead, we pull, pull the suture through at the end and cut the remaining suture. A layer of sterile strips is finally applied and the wound is covered with degaderm with a thin layer of gauze. The wound is kept dry by sealing it with a tegaderm dressing.